Today I'm going to talk about a downtown activation and placemaking plan that we recently completed with Grafe uh, Consultants out of Green Bay. So the introduction and purpose, so this is a, in 2014, the Harbor Center Master Plan was completed in partnership with the Downtown Business Improvement District in the city of Sheboygan. And that was really the honest for getting um, a lot of what you're seeing in the vibrancy of our downtown today. Um, housing, uh, cross connection in marketing, and then placemaking. So I'll talk about placemaking in a little bit more depth as we move forward, but this is really kind of taking this new version of this plan is taking uh, the, the successes of that 2014 plan of which about 90% of the work in that plan has been completed. Um, and kind of evolving into some additional districts and some additional uh, activities for us to continue to bring some vibrancy to the downtown. So in the 2014 plan, the, uh, there was a number of goals and actions, install streetscape amenities to reinforce the arts, culture, and food district to encourage pedestrian activity throughout the downtown. Um, there was a number of projects that were completed, with the largest one being the uh, revitalization of the library plaza that was completed last year, um, and then some street, streetscape improvements along A Street and the Niagara Avenue corridor. Um, another goal was to increase awareness and understanding of the Sheboygan market opportunities among property owners, investors, and developers, and you've seen that success uh, with the uh, additional housing that has happened, although this plan added, asked for another 50 additional downtown housing units, and we've actually uh, are closer to 350. Uh, but yearly we hold a regional developer summit where we invite people from the outside to come in and see the opportunities that we have. And that was really the success for moving these developments forward. <clears throat> Other goals were to establish the Arts and Culture District and we did that with the John Michael Kohler Arts Center, uh, expanding public art and introducing family friendly activities in partnership with the Mead Public Library. Um, and then support the coordination among local and regional tourism efforts, events, and consumer marketing to leverage investment. Um, and there's a number of events that have been held, Night Market being one of them, uh, in partnership with the Sheboygan County Interfaith Organization. Um, another goal was to improve the mobility within the bid by promoting alternative modes of transportation. And this is kind of where the uh, downtown trolley, the seasonal trolley service that Shoreline Metro operates, uh, kind of came out of, and then uh, shared bike systems, which we continue to discuss today on uh, where we should go with that. Uh, another improve wayfinding and navigation within the bid to encourage ex visitors to explore additional businesses and amenities. Um, although we didn't create an app as what was planned in there, we did reestablish street connections by opening up Wisconsin and New York mm -hmm. avenues, and then installing pedestrian wayfinding signage throughout the downtown. And lastly, improve economic returns and reduce vacancy for property owners in the downtown. So we developed design standards that our staff follows today as somebody's coming forward and wants to make renovations to their um, storefront that it kind of follows uh, a plan for how we do so and then preserve downtown property values by increasing the aesthetics and encouraging quality renovation. So the new plan, the 2019 plan that um, we're talking about here today is to continue to create placemaking enhancements at key locations to reinforce identity, celebrate strength, and adjust challenges, improve them, continue to improving the mobility of both within the downtown districts with alternate uh, modes of transportation, uh, continue <coughs> to support local and regional tourism, and then preserve property values. So what is placemaking? Placemaking is a collaborative process where community members, business partners, and property owners and municipal governments work to reimagine public spaces. Uh, the goal of placemaking projects is to help people feel more connected to places, more excited to walk to lunch and shop locally and play with their kids in parks and other mm -hmm. green spaces. So on the screen is some examples of placemaking that you see today that was success of the 2014 plan, sidewalk seating, planters and trees, markets and festivals, downtown district signage, seating areas and community events with the uh, city green. <clears throat> this plan also, this plan looks at four key areas. So the uh, Michigan Avenue and the Indiana Avenue are two districts that haven't been focused on in the past um, and that are included in the plan as well as 
what the paradigm folks would call uptown, which is primarily um, Erie Avenue to Michigan Avenue, uh, that area, and then the downtown uh, basically from Erie Avenue down to the river. So each one of these districts is broken out with a number of priority recommendations. Michigan Avenue, um, the three or four pri uh, priority recommendations are the right size of the roadway. So there's a lot of uh, road on Michigan Avenue, a wide road with very wide parking lanes. So the idea is how do you try to bring people together uh, with bump outs and those types of things we'll talk further about. Uh, strategic nodes of art lighting, uh, district gateway, and entrance markers, and then facade improvement projects. In the uptown, it's very similar. Uh, priority recommendations are strategic nodes of lighting, sidewalk seating, and facade improvement projects. Uh, downtown is the same as uptown, and then Indiana Avenue is really kind of going off of the whole innovation district and uh, working with district-specific street furniture, um, gateway signage, facade improvements, and bike path signage and landscaping. So in the recommendations, the gateway signage and street uh, prints, you can see on the screen, there's a number of ideas that came forward on different signage to identify these corridors, as well as street prints along the key corridors to try to slow traffic. So there's some plan, there would could be some plans to paint some areas um, and, and try to slow traffic with traffic calming with, with painting and those types of things on crosswalks and streets. Um, <clears throat> we've seen some murals already on buildings, particularly on the outside of the Above and Beyond Children's Museum. Um, but the idea of trying to use more uh, district entrance mural signage on key buildings within those districts to identify uh, those districts is, is another thing that's planned. Uh, parklets, so parklets are taking parking stalls and putting barriers around them and having seating areas out in the street uh, to try to green up areas. So in this picture, it shows the U.S. Bank building and what it would be if some of those parking stalls were created into parklets to bring some extra greenage to the green and stuff along the street. Um, and then there's some pictures on the bottom of how parklets, and you see these a lot of times in larger communities as a way to try to encourage people out on the street uh, to dine and, and socialize. Uh, strategic nodes of art lighting. So there's different examples here. Some of, that's, uh, our, some of that lighting has already happened in the alleys downtown uh, in partnership with the Business Improvement District. These are just some additional examples of what that might be. Um, activating vacant storefronts. So the idea is to uh, take storefronts and put artwork and or uh, dining to try to activate it so when you're walking down the street you feel a sense of connection uh, with those types of businesses. And then sidewalk and alley uh, seating for restaurants. So we some of that has happened already with the Black Pig Alley, um, but do, considering more of that uh, alley seating for restaurants and people to kind of come out of the building and into these public spaces. And then right-sizing the roadway, particularly as it relates to Michigan Avenue, um, the idea of some type of uh, bump outs and or landscaped barriers with seating and stuff in to try to connect people closer to the street and not feel like it's you know, an airport runway and trying to green up and, and make it a place, a, a third place where people want to be. And then lastly, uh, facade improvements and projects that support uh, the rehabilitation. So we've successfully worked with uh, the cautious company on the property where they are today with the paradigm. And then the other uh, photo is the Mavericks Barbershop, which were historic preservation renovation projects funded by the city. Under the innovation district specific street furniture, this would be related to Indiana Avenue and trying to give a sense of place with uh, improvements on the street and kind of tied it into the whole innovation district and how that all plays together as a tech corridor um, and kind of including the streetscaping into those areas. Wayfinding strategy to encourage walking and biking and telling people how far it is on distances and those types of things so they know where they're going and, and how, what to expect. So the next step, so we um, see this plan as being implemented with a variety of grants and CDBG, uh, Community Development <coughs> Block Grant uh, funds that we have. Um, so th the idea would be to start 
uh, in a document later in the agenda, there's uh, uh, allocations for the 2020 block grant that has streetscaping uh, funding in there. Some of this stuff will be funded with that. Um, and then the plan is to work with representatives of the districts in, in having developing meetings and partnerships to advance these placemaking in the four districts. And then I will leave you with the project for public spaces and that placemaking shows people just how powerful their collective vision can be. It helps to reimagine everyday spaces and to see a new the potential of parks, downtown, waterfronts, plazas, neighborhood streets, markets, campuses, and public buildings. So that's what I have. If there's any questions, I'm happy to answer them. But the Planning Commission has unanimously approved this, and the document is before you tonight for uh, adoption, and then we will start implementation. So thank you.